we are in the assembly integration and testing clean room facility too. Uh, tell us what exactly do we see here? See that's a satellite uh, which we have just now completed the integration, testing and ready for launch. It's called ExpoSat, X-ray polarimetric satellite to study uh, basically black holes. Okay. And uh, basically what happens is when black holes eat into other objects like the stars, mm -hmm. suppose another star comes closer to black hole, uh, there will be a material attrition which will, which will be drawn because of the huge gravity in the black hole, mm -hmm. the material will start flowing like a tunnel into it. It will generate so much of radiation uh, in the, in the X-ray domain. Mm -hmm. And this uh, radiation, if you are able to do the polarimetric measurement of it, you will be able to get an idea about the... I see. Uh, and what are all these things here which we can see, see right now? Each of this is a station where one satellite can be assembled. Okay. Uh, so this is a test fix fixture which you can move uh, in different directions, tilt it up, uh, tilt, uh, orient it. When you are want to assemble, no, it's a station where, like automobile assembly station, correct, you will correct, see. Correct, correct. It's similar to that. So you can see one of the structures there. Okay. IDRS is, is an Indian data relay, uh, relay station, uh, mm -hmm. a satellite, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be built under part of the Gaganyan program. I see. When the crew module is in in orbit mm -hmm. they have to com maintain communication between earth and crew continuously mm -hmm. but we don't have ground stations all across the world mm -hmm. so what we do is the crew will communicate to the satellite the satellite will communicate back to us I see. so this will remain in geostationary orbit mm -hmm. so we have to build two such satellites and launch prior to the gaganian program so interesting yeah okay. so when you talk about satellites and communication there's a lot of talk about navic See, first of all, you have to understand the Navic is created for a different purpose. It was created for a strategic purpose. Correct. And it was created when uh, there was a denial of GPS to I us. I remember, yeah. So then uh, the primary objective is to provide the services to the strategic forces. So, you know, typical GPS gives you an accuracy about 20 meters. Uh, could be better also. But we have designed uh, Navic for an accuracy of all 3 meters because it is based on the stationary set of satellites, not a moving set of satellites. And it is actually demonstrated. But unfortunately, what happened is after our launching, the penetration of that into the, our defense forces has not been very strong. So I have taken it up uh, much more seriously and the present CDS also is very keen to make sure that it actually happens. We had a series of meetings to make sure that it gets into the Army, the Navy, the Air Force and all their equipments. The equipments which are inside are mostly GPS based equipments. And to convert from GPS to Navic requires a lot of work in terms of hardware development, change over a period of time. But they are on the job. I believe in another few years that uh, transition from GPS to Navic will happen. I see. Second, uh, forward to it, second, yeah. second point is that, of course, when you have a capability, it has also a civilian signal. Now, the civilian signal should be used by civilian people. And we have given a lot of thrust to that in the last past. But the civilian utility was affected because of various important reason called the frequencies. So, you know, GPS is operating in a band called L1 band and L2 band. Whereas, we were denied those bands by GPS long back. So we built the Navic around two other bands called S band and L5 band. So these two bands are not there in your mobile chips or chipsets. It's happening now though. So yeah. we said that uh, for anybody to use this in mobiles, they need to have an additional chipset in L5 and S band, which is creating problem for them to additional cost, additional infrastructure etc. is required, antenna required. So we decided that we have to add L1 band and L2 band into Navic. So we built it and launched uh, satellites in L1 and L2 band now and also we launched a highly encrypted strategic signal also. So last Navic launch onwards, this series has now started. Now recently you heard that Apple has announced yeah, their yeah, L1 so band based uh, Navic. Yeah. Now I believe it will become popular in civilian sector like vehicle fleet tracking, railway tracking. It's already implemented using L5 and S band. But with L1 band it will become more popular. Interesting. ಏಷ್ಯಾನೆಟ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಿ ನೀವು ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಏಷ್ಯಾನೆಟ್ ಸುವರ್ಣ ನ್ಯೂಸ್